Hello everyone and welcome to Skirt Garage. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important items of preventative maintenance on the F-Type and that is of course the differential. Now it's no secret that these F-Types are absolutely chewing through their differentials. So today what we're going to be doing is discussing why that's happening, a way to prevent it and of course a nice DIY on how to change the fluid in your differential. So if you guys are stopping by for the first time, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell next to it so you can be alerted each and every time I make a new upload. discuss the differentials available in the F-Type. There are three. The base F-Type comes with an open differential, meaning if you try to do any sweet donuts, you're going to get a lot of one tire fire. The S variation of the F-Type comes with a mechanical limited slip differential. And what that means is once the differential senses that there's a loss of traction, it will mechanically lock the differential and both wheels spin at the same rate. You'll be able to do some great looking donuts and skids. The R and SBR F-Type comes with an electronic limited slip differential, meaning that there's a computer module within the differential that can decide when to lock the differential, whether it's during uh, loss of traction or whether it's ahead of loss of traction. Differentials tend to go bad or fail, generally speaking, if one of two things happens. First, if you just lose the differential fluid within it. So let's say that there's a leak or there's a bad seal, uh, the fluid will come out and of course you'll have a lot of metal on metal within the differential and it will fail. The second and more common issue that we see with our F-types is that the differential itself overheats. So when the differential overheats, that fluid inside can kind of turn into like a sludgy, almost paste. And you'll be able to see it when you remove uh, your drain plug. That sludge uh, obviously doesn't do its job at lubricating. And so your differential is running with higher friction. It has less lubrication. It gets hotter. Uh, the computer module up above on the electronic uh, limited slip differentials can burn out and ultimately it will fail. Now that's all generally speaking, but specifically I have a hunch as to why our F-types are having issues. I have two reasons or at least thoughts why I think this might be happening. The first one is the style of supercharger that the F-type uses. The F-type uses a root style supercharger, which root style superchargers, they create a lot of torque immediately. The propellers are spinning all the way through and they create this massive plateau of torque all the way through the rev range. So immediately when you hit the throttle, those propellers are already spun up and you have immediate boost and torque. So it puts a lot of strain on those differentials trying to get all that power to the ground. The other reason why I think that these differentials can prematurely fail is because of the electronic aspect in the R and SBR variation. My thought is this. Because the R and SBR has that electronic limited slip differential, the computer within the differential might actually say, hey, he's going around a corner pretty fast. I'm going to prematurely lock the differential. And let's say you don't need the differential locked. You were just going around the corner quickly. You weren't planning on jumping back on the gas. Then what could happen is your differential could lock prematurely and it could do it often. And so if it's constantly locking, unlocking, locking, unlocking, it could drive up the temperatures in your differential and it could turn that fluid to sludge a lot quicker. Hence, you have more sludge, less lubrication within the differential and it starts to fail prematurely. Now, for those reasons, I highly recommend that you guys change your differential fluid a little bit early. My car has 36,000 miles. I plan to change the differential fluid now. And most of that is because I'm not sure if the previous owner, uh, I bought this car with 29,000 miles. I'm not sure if the previous owner uh, changed the differential fluid. And considering that I like to autocross the car and within the next few weeks, I'm gonna be installing 
this Velocity AP tune and larger crank pulley. This bad girl is about to have 650 horsepower. I autocross the car, I race the car. I want to make sure that my differential is set and properly lubricated to handle all this fun I'm about to have. For you guys, I would recommend that you change your diff fluid before 40,000 miles. Um, and if you drive the car hard, obviously I would change it sooner. It really just depends if you're the first owner, if you're the second owner, if you plan to track or if you plan to autocross your car, if you're running uh, more boost. Obviously you're gonna have to change those parameters and do it a little bit more prematurely. So what I'm gonna do today is show you guys how to do it. But before, I want to show you something else. Guys, what I'm gonna be using today is the two jack technique. And I don't think I mentioned this enough, so I would like to mention it now. These are called jack pad adapters and they are crucial if you plan to jack your car up and to start working on it underneath it. These are like 10 bucks and they save your bacon if you're trying to successfully uh, evenly distribute the force that these jacks make on your underbody of your car. So if I haven't said it enough, which I don't think I have, please buy some of these. They are absolutely crucial to save your car. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. That way you guys have it when you guys start get underneath your car and start working on them. So I had to say that now, let's move on to some of the other products that you will need for today's specific differential fluid install. Let's get started. Okay guys, here are a few specialty items that I'm gonna have you grab before you start this job. I'm gonna have the links for all of these products in the description box below. That way you can just click on the link, uh, find it, order these on a Monday, and they should be there ready for you to do this job the following weekend. Now here's the deal. Uh, you're gonna need one of these if you want to do the old-fashioned way of pumping the fluid in uh, You will need some extensions some wobbles will definitely make this easier because uh, These will allow you to have up to 16 degrees of angle that way you can uh, fit these extensions over the cross member Underneath there where it's kind of tight for the differential These are just uh, they're ball end hex bits they make things a little bit easier, like I said, if you're trying to work around uh, tight fitting areas. So I'm gonna have those and they're just helpful in the future. So if you don't have them, definitely buy them. It'll make this job a lot easier and future ones. I just wanna talk real quick about the motor oil. This seems to be uh, a point of confusion for quite a few people. It was for me. I normally have no problem kind of switching up uh, manufacturer recommended oil if there's one of the same weight and viscosity and it works just as well. However, I did not want to do that this time with the F-Type, and I'll tell you why. So the recommended fluid uh, for these locking differentials, especially the electronic ones, is the BOT 720. Now, the problem is if you look at the back of this, there is nothing on here that says what weight or viscosity it is. And so that becomes a little bit of an issue if you're trying to cross-reference this differential oil with something else. And so there have been a few members who have used uh, Motul and have used Royal Purple and they're having no problems. Um, but just in case, I wanted to be safe and make sure I had the exact additives that Jaguar wanted and that it was the exact same weight and viscosity that they originally designed the differential around. So I went ahead and got these and plus I got each bottle for 37 and I think if you get like some aftermarket Royal Purple or... Um, Motul, it's somewhere between 20 and 30 and so for seven dollars more a bottle I thought the peace of mind was just kind of worth it and one top tip guys when you go to your Local parts store the guys who work at the parts department of dealerships. They're so nice uh, Do do this piece of advice. Don't buy anything online from a parts dealership if you go in person and you just have a nice conversation with them and say hey I'm gonna be buying this oil. Can you guys give me any sort of discount? I've never ever walked away from a parts department at a dealership without getting at least 10, 15 bucks off. And they could literally care less. They're always like, yeah, of course, man, you know, whatever. So I, I think this is normally like, I don't know, 55 or something like that, but they, they dropped it to 37 and I didn't even really have to ask. I was like, hey, can you guys do anything on price? And they're like, absolutely. So uh, that's just a little bit of a you know tip in the future parts departments are almost always willing to work with you so there you go that's everything that you guys should need i'm gonna go ahead and get the car jacked up and we're gonna get this going all right let's get started
All right, now that the tire and wheel is off, first thing I'd like to do is clean up both the drain plug and I'd also like to clean up the fill plug and show you guys where it's at. After I clean up the drain plug, I'm going to uh, loosen the fill plug. That way I know that I can indeed remove the contents of it and be able to fill it back up. Obviously, if you remove the uh, drain plug, you drain everything, but you can't remove the fill plug, then you're in big trouble, right? All right, so let's get started. Guys, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to show you where everything is if I can give you kind of a zoomed out look and then a zoomed in look. So I've got my flashlight here at the very tip so I can show you a little easier. We're gonna advance forward and right here, you can see a few landmarks. So this is the upper control arm. This is the uh, coil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this flashlight and I'm gonna stick it in between the coil right here and let me see if I can position you a little better. With it stuck right there, you can just make it out underneath. Yeah, there it is. You see it? So we gotta get all the way back there. So that's why we're gonna use those wobbles and extensions. It's gonna make our life pretty easy. All right, let's get it. Right in. There she blooms. From the outside, you can see it coming out, and I'll show you what it looks like from up top. We need exactly 1.23 liters. That's gonna be one of these. And then just under, uh, I'm gonna fill this back up to just under right here. We're gonna put 0.23 liters back in here. Man, that's next to nothing. Just under 2.5, not all of it would be evacuated. So I think that's gonna be perfect.
Well guys, there you have it. I know that these videos are not my most successful ones on YouTube. I know that they're not the most sexy either because all I'm doing ultimately is just showing you guys how to change your differential fluid. However, I do think that these are the most valuable for you guys as F-Type owners. So please do me a kindness if you haven't already. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this a big old thumbs up. Help me make sure that I should keep doing these uh, DIY videos because I personally find them super helpful when I'm in need and I hope that you guys are grateful as well for these. So if you've enjoyed it, please do those things. I love you guys. Be safe and have a great day. See ya.